Hi everyone, it's your soul, and just had this meme come across my uh, social stream here, and it got me thinking. So let's just take a look at it quickly. It basically says, why didn't Alexander Acosta put Epstein away when he had the chance? So back in the day when Epstein was brought up on charges for uh, child abuse, the first time in America, uh, basically he got a sweetheart plea deal and uh, was basically let off which, you know, I mean, it's not actually uncommon for people to be let off in these positions when they do that kind of thing. But I would say it's not that common for this to actually be out in the open and come through the court process. Usually I think they just, you know, the court, the charges are dropped. But um, the point here is that there's this quote that's been going around saying that Alex Acosta basically said uh, during an interview for the job, uh, for his job in the Labour, I think it was Labour Department, uh, for the Trump administration, basically off the cuff, kind of said that he didn't um, prosecute Epstein because he, Epstein, quote, belonged to intelligence and to leave it alone. So obviously, you know, thinking about that, it, it, I mean, it, it, bearing in mind we're talking, as it says here at the bottom, Epstein's job was to provide the CIA with videos of people doing unspeakable acts to children to use as blackmail. Now, obviously, we don't have, well, I don't have um, absolute proof of that. But it is certainly true that many witnesses um, and all kinds of people have, over the years have come out and said that that is what they do. Um, basically, I mean, it makes sense if you, if you want a small number of people to control a large number of people. There needs to be a chain of control, doesn't there, from the small group to the big group. And the less links in that chain, the more efficient it is from that perspective. So if you're a corrupt, evil person and you want to control the whole world, then all you... Well, you definitely need to be controlling the world leaders, let's say. That would be a very helpful thing for you to do. Um, and if you also happen to control secret services of a certain country, then you would definitely be using those secret services on some level to um, attempt to blackmail as many people as possible. Obviously, this is an ancient um, approach. It's nothing new. It's been done probably for thousands of years in one form or another. We don't have definite proof publicly that Epstein was involved in that, but it does... To my mind, the evidence does point in that direction, definitely. So I was thinking about this and I said, well, if that's true, then it implicates Donald Trump because either A, he's been blackmailed and that wouldn't surprise me at all, or B, if he's not being blackmailed and the CIA are doing this, then... I mean, theoretically, the CIA are meant to be under him. I don't really think they are, but let's say they're at least meant to be on the same team. So doesn't that really, to some extent, then mean that he's in alignment with that being done? It's not like he's come out and said, oh, I've just found this shocking truth that the government's been paying to have children raped so that we can blackmail people. We must stop this. And I guess you could say there's a third option, which is the one that you know Trump supporters seem to prefer, which is that... Um, that he's against all that kind of thing, but he's, you know, fighting the system on the inside and doing everything he can to try and stop these people doing these crimes, and that's why Epstein's been arrested. Ultimately, you know, I don't have all the information on that. I'm not going to pass judgment on what's really happening, but I will say that the fact that he hasn't come out and said that this is happening, and actually has tried to distance himself and lie actually about his past, about Epstein, when we've seen the videos of him with Epstein and so on when he was younger. Doesn't It's not a good look for him. He's not, I mean, you wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that he was being totally upfront and transparent at the very least. And people will always invent their reasons as to why that is. Oh, it's just some tactic and blah, blah, blah. You know, personally, I, I, can, I, could, I could foresee a situation or imagine a situation where, you know, he really was actually against these people and it was a hard job to do and I could understand that. But... Given the history of the presidencies of America and given the history of the way in which the uh, Constitution has been was corrupt to begin with and it's got more corrupted and the whole system basically is a charade and anybody who's done deep dives into this knows that, I think there's almost no chance, realistically, of a president becoming president and actually being able to change things or ever even having the intention of changing things in a deep way because the people that control that seat would never let that happen. So anyway, uh, I, coming back to this quote, I, I was like, well, you know, that's all very interesting. We should probably look into that a bit more. So where does this quote come from? Because, it, you know, it's quite a bombshell quote, if you think about it. W what's the origins of it? So 
basically it's been quoted on the daily beast it's quoted on the blaze it's quoted on zero hedge um let's get rid of this it's quoted on zero hedge uh the same quote on all these pages uh here i was told epstein belonged to intelligence and to leave it alone let's just read the quote yeah this is vicky ward writing and we're going to come back to who she is in a moment so a couple of years ago, I was interviewing a former senior White House official when the name Jeffrey Epstein came up. Unaware of my personal history with Epstein, this person assured me that the New York financier was no serious harm to anyone. He was a good guy, a charming guy, useful too. He knew a lot of rich Arabs, including the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, and further, he had clever ideas about creating bond issues for them. OK, so he has a girl problem, this person threw on, almost as an afterthought. Epstein's name, I was told, had been raised by the Trump transition team when Alexander Acosta, the former US attorney in Miami who'd infamously cut Epstein a non-prosecution plea deal back in 2007, was being interviewed for the job of Labour Secretary. The plea deal put a hard stop to a separate federal investigation of alleged sex crimes with minors and trafficking. Is the Epstein case going to cause a problem? Acosta had been asked. Acosta had explained, breezily apparently, that back in the day he had just one meeting on the Epstein case. He'd cut the non-prosecution deal with one of Epstein's attorneys because he had been told, quote, to back off, that Epstein was above his pay grade. I was told Epstein belonged to intelligence and to leave it alone, he told his interviewers in the Trump transition, who evidently thought that was a sufficient answer and went ahead and hired Acosta. So, she doesn't explain exactly what the source of this quote is. She basically says here that she's talking to a former senior White House official, and doesn't actually exactly say that this quote came from that same person, but it's kind of written like it did. So that's the only evidence we have in terms of who she says said this. So, all right, it would be pretty important to know who had said that, really, wouldn't it? It's a big deal, a uh, very big deal. However, the story gets a bit weirder, because if we dig into uh, Vicky Ward, this uh, journalist, we find out that she's actually apparently close friends with Ghislaine Maxwell, who was Epstein's partner slash possibly child procurer, so on. Daughter of Robert Maxwell, ex, very likely spy for MI6, Mossad and so on. So, you know, people have commented, why is Vicky Ward always exposing Jeffrey Epstein when she's friends with Gisele Maxwell and Gisele Maxwell is friends with Jeffrey Epstein? That seems a bit strange. And people have pointed out that she never once uh, inferred that Ghislaine Maxwell was involved in any of the crimes that Epstein was, even though they were such great friends, apparently. So there's a few unanswered questions here about what exactly is going on. But nonetheless, we can clearly see that there's this network of people who know each other and uh, who are obviously connected on some level to sources of information which are relevant at the very least, and now the job becomes one of picking apart what's true and what isn't. And I would say that this does kind of play into the concept that people have of there being this struggle between good and evil within the CIA, uh, because it kind of infers that there are different groups within, or different people within these groups who maybe have different allegiances um, and who... Or, uh, have different missions and agendas but they're not all aligned pointing in the same direction however that doesn't necessarily mean to say automatically that there's this battle between good and evil you know i mean political power struggles happen all the time between people who are not necessarily good they're just fighting for power and if that means making one person look really bad uh, one group look really bad at one moment and then you know turning against their previous allies and doing the same against their allies in the next moment, then they do that. Um, you know, who's to say? It could even be that there's some other foreign um, nation involved trying to just generally sow discontent and imbalance and um, weaken the nation in general. Maybe there is no good or bad battle happening within the CIA. Maybe it's just infiltration by another outside force. Uh, ultimately, I would say, from my perspective, the way that I get to this, get to understand the truth of this situation is literally through the truth. In other words, you know, if you're in the middle of all of that and you yourself don't know even what's going on, as long as you yourself stick to the truth and tell the truth and be transparent, you've done your part. 
and you've done the best you can do to clear up the mess. And unless people involved do that, then even they probably won't know what exactly is going on. And that's part of the problem, because obviously the CIA and these groups, their whole job is basically to lie professionally. So, you know, it's understandable that there's this whole nightmare mess going on. It's just terrifying and terrible that it appears that the uh, what they might call collateral damage in all of this happens to be innocent children. And, you know, that is something that's not acceptable to, you know, pretty much everyone. So, what do we do? I mean, in a sane world, the people would stand up and say, we're not having this. Obviously, this has gone too far. You know, basically, no matter what the risk is to our country from outside forces... Uh, we can't have this risk posed to our people by our own inside forces, so we need to take action. What exactly that is, is up to them. It's up to their free will. Uh, so um, I don't have all the answers to that, but it's not up to me because I'm not even in America. Um, I would suggest that the first, the first step has to be enlightenment and gaining transparency and awareness and understanding as to the causes of what's going on so that proper changes can be made. So yeah, if you have any extra info to add on this, Vicky Ward, Shuzley Maxwell, Acosta and so on, then I'd definitely like to see it and uh, maybe we'll get to the bottom of this at some point. So until next time, peace.